Whether or not you're a fan of the Winter Olympics, it is likely you know his name. Sean White, incredible execution. Claiming his first gold medal in 2006, a feat he repeated in 2010, Sean White has long been the biggest name in the snowboard halfpipe event. It's athletes like Sean White that make you think the impossible is possible. The only trick you really remember is the last one because you it's the do or die trick. You better make that one, you know, to get that score. With tricks that dazzle fans and fellow snowboarders alike, at times, Sean White seems to defy the laws of nature. All eyes to this hit. Oh! I had worked so hard at that point to learn this trick, the double McTwist 1260. I had crashed time and time again. There it is, right there. Oh my gosh, that is a move that encompasses three and a half rotations, two flips, the double McTwist. What allows Sean White to do these tricks is more than just his incredible athletic skill and years of hard training. It's also the engineering and design of the half pipe that allows him to gain enough speed to generate big air. Height is all speed. If you can get that speed, you can get the height. Briano Collar is an engineering professor at Northern Illinois University and funded by the National Science Foundation. He says an important factor in the design of the half pipe is the height of the walls and the radius, or curvature. The reason why you make your wall higher is so you can fit a bigger radius inside that curve. At the 2014 Games in Sochi, engineers have built a half pipe that is 22 feet high, 65 feet wide, and 557 feet long. The radius is crucial because it allows the snowboarder to change direction at high speeds, from barreling down the hill to soaring into the air. While he's going around this turn, He's experiencing some rather dramatic forces. He had to take this, this momentum that's going this way, convert it to momentum going that way. As Sean White rides the curve of the half pipe, he has a velocity, a speed with a direction. As he begins to change direction, he experiences what scientists call centripetal acceleration. You might be headed this way, and then be headed this way, and because you're changing direction, you actually get an acceleration that way. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change in velocity. Acceleration that changes direction is called centripetal acceleration. As Sean White changes direction by riding up the curvature, he is experiencing centripetal acceleration. For snowboarders like White, the force from centripetal acceleration can be over two Gs. The extra force that Sean White feels just by going around that curve is about two and a half, 2.7 times his own weight. So Sean White has to carry his own weight plus the two and a half times his own weight just to pull himself through that turn. If Sean White wanted to get twice as much air, he would have to increase his speed by almost half. Entering the curve at this higher speed would require an increased acceleration to change his direction, placing a much greater force on his body. So instead of carrying 2.5, 2.7 times his weight through that turn, he'd be carrying about five times his weight through the turn. It's like putting five of his buddies on his back and trying to maneuver through that transition. To lessen the force of centripetal acceleration, engineers are continually optimizing the dimensions of the half pipe, allowing for a larger radius. And a larger radius also means higher walls. When the snowboard halfpipe made its Olympic debut in 1998, the walls were much lower than they are today. But with each Winter Olympics, advances in engineering and design have led to larger and larger halfpipes. They went from 12 feet to 15 feet to 18 feet to 22 feet. So over the past few decades, they've doubled, essentially doubled in size. Allowing snowboarders to go faster, get more airtime, but not increase the forces on their body. The more gentle this turn is, the lower those forces are. So if you make that radius twice as big, you make the wall twice as big, that force gets cut in half. You win or lose, you're an Olympian, so it doesn't really matter. You're, you're, you're there for the, the thrill of the fight. This close relationship of half-pipe design to maximize speed and airtime allows snowboarders like Sean White to push the limits of their skill bringing the sport to new heights. And there it is!